Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and I'm back with a stepped up emergency card video for you. We are working with the kit from the beginning of February. It's kit 24 for pet, pet sympathy and critter sentiments. So we have them with circles and without circles. And then there are the new rectangular sentiments in case those are helpful for you. Strip sentiments, there are four different fonts. For the most part, it's the same sentiments across all the different formats, but it gives you lots of options. And then here's the card sketch. I will link at the end of this video and in the description box to the video where we just make the card sketch. It's a mini slimline card and we use pattern paper and die cut and it's super fun. But this one has an extra page with three fun fold options. These downloadable kits are completely free for subscribers. So if you think you might be interested or if you enjoy this content, please give this a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. For our first card, we are going to take a piece of cardstock that's eight inches by three and a quarter inches and we're scoring at one and three quarters of an inch on one side, doesn't matter which side. I love that this option is gonna let you get three card bases from a single sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. For the pink triangles that are one and three quarters of an inch by three and a quarter, one is that left flap. But on the right, I just cut a piece of cardstock that's one and three quarter by three and a quarter to put on the right and we'll connect them with our center gray pieces. I've also cut a piece of pattern paper for the inside that is three inches by six inches. I was just going through my scraps and seeing what I had. This is a great card for scraps. This looks a lot like the original sketch. So I'm using glue to add my pattern paper onto my left and right triangles. And then I'm just gonna use some mint tape to kind of hold those down and in place because the way the card works is by stretching these two long skinny rectangles across between them. And that's much easier to do when they aren't moving and flapping around. To add these to my card, I am just checking to see how much room I have. It's maybe half an inch on either side. And I will add glue only on the left and the right where it's sort of overlapping those larger rectangles. And then when I open this up, I still have a, quite a bit of room on the inside to write a message. Um, I'm gonna decorate mine with some pattern paper. This is ever so slightly smaller than the card base. And then I thought originally I was gonna put this white strip for writing a message over top of the pattern paper, but I love that paper so much. So <laughs> I didn't, I just added some glue and I'm gonna add that right behind the front. That is the same size as that white shimmer cardstock that I put on the front. So easy peasy there. We are mixing and matching some of my very favorite products for the cards today. I love critters. Like I have a whole stash in my drawer that is just critter die cuts. Normally I keep my stuff organized by company, but not for this, not for this. Um, so this is the Gnome Drive Holiday die set. And there's a gnome and a tree and then there's all kinds of add-ons. It's from Spellbinders but I love the car. It is the perfect size for all of Karen Berniston's critters. Um, if you don't know Karen Berniston, if you're not familiar with that brand, she's really known for her pop-ups. Uh, I think in the last stepped up video, I used a BAM box, that's her design. But she also has tons and tons and tons of little critter dies. Uh, and so I kind of went through my stash and I'm, we're gonna make a bunny. <laughs> I did not have that in mind. Originally, I was gonna put a raccoon in this car. Um, I'll put a raccoon on something else later. We'll get there. But this guy comes together pretty quickly. I will say the one trick to this car is to put the grill on first. I've made this a dozen times maybe. Um, and the grill really helps you kind of line everything else up. So here's the bunny. And what I love about Karen Berniston's dies is that there's not like a die for the eyeballs and the tiny nose. Instead, there it's a stencil. The die is a stencil. So you cut it out and then you just hold it over top of the bunny that it cut out and you stick your little pen in there and you draw in the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And I love that so much more than trying to keep track of these teeny, teeny, tiny little pieces. Um, there are just a couple pieces to add to the bunny the ears have little spots that cut out and so there's a single piece to glue back behind them so you have some pink showing through the ears and then the belly will tuck up under his hands 
and under his chin. So I can stick this bunny in there and it looks like he's holding the wheel. I lost it when I, when I stuck him in there the first time and realized how perfectly he peeked over the top. I just giggled so hard. This is from that same die set. There is like a little Easter basket and some Easter eggs that you can put in there. It's from her spring animal set. So there's also like a chick and a larger egg and then an egg they can hatch out of. It's a really great die set, um, sort of small and compact. And so a pretty good price point on that. So I am just arranging my pieces on my card. I'm gonna go ahead and put this bunny mobile on the right. And then we'll use one of our circle sentiments over on the left, but really, you could center the bunny instead, and then you could use a strip sentiment on the bottom. Um, you could use one of our rectangular sentiments. I'm still sort of working those into the way I think about designing emergency cards. I put a little foam on the two inch circle, and now I have punched out some bunny loves you and added it with some removable adhesive in case I change my mind later, but I doubt I will. And that finishes up card number one. I just think that it's so cute. Card number two is a little bit sassy. Hey, potty animal. Um, so here's how the card works. It's a little different. So the flaps on the left and right are connected to the card base. And then there's a little closure in that pink cardstock that runs through the middle to hold it closed. So this piece is eight and a half by three and a quarter. And I'm going to score it at one and a quarter inches on either end. This card base is slightly smaller than the last one. Okay, so the, the actual base finished size is gonna be three and a quarter inches by six inches. Um, that's because I wanted you to be able to make several of these from a single sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. You can make three of them, which is bananas. So these two pieces are really similar to the ones before. They're a little bit longer. They're four and three quarters of an inch. And then I have an extra one that is a quarter inch shorter than that. That's how we're gonna create our closure. So we'll start with these first two pieces. This should look really familiar. I have that little bit of a border on the top and the bottom. This is longer because the flaps are shorter, right? I needed that to stretch all the way across. So I'm sort of eyeballing this, figuring out how much space I have. And then I'm gonna glue only on the left flap, only the left flap, don't glue card shut, okay? I'm centering it up and I'm gonna press that down and I'm gonna give it a minute, okay? That is the only place it is connected to the card. This other pink piece is a quarter inch shorter than the one we just glued to the card, okay? So you can see it and I want that quarter inch, that disparity on that left-hand side when we're looking at it and it's open. And I'm drawing a little pencil line about an inch from the end, okay? So there's about an inch. I'm gonna add glue all over the pink except for that one inch and then a little bit on the right hand side of this because that's where it's going to overlap that pattern paper and i'm going to line this up and i'm going to leave a quarter inch of the front piece showing on the left hand side okay so here i have two more pieces that are the same size and i'm going to add these to the center so i have a place to write my message um, i could probably write on that pattern paper but this will also add a little bit of sturdiness right because it's maybe a 65 pound i added glue all over it i'm going to line it up with the front piece and then close the card into it and it will be completely hidden behind that flap so as we close this up you can see i have this little gap there where the two pieces of cardstock are not glued together and I can tuck the right hand side, that rectangle into the card and it holds it shut so beautifully. So this die set <laughs> is from Brutus Monroe. It's called Pet Spa and it's a little deceiving because it looks like you can just make dogs for a spa, but you can actually just make two dogs. <laughs> um, you don't have to do spa day. Uh, I have made a card with like the head towel and all that. And it's so funny in the cucumber eyes. I will try to link that. There's a short um, with that one below. And then here I am just quickly putting the pieces together. It is not hard, it's not hard at all. There, I like that about Brutus Monroe dies is that they're usually pretty simple and straightforward to put together. And then we're gonna make some sunglasses. These are from the Spellbinder Smart Glasses set. They're meant to go with like a dragon and a panda and some other stuff, but they're the perfect size for these dogs. And so instead of leaving the centers out, 
I just used some black cardstock and set those right in there. And now we have this like cool cat dog and she is super styling and a little grumpy about it. Okay, here are the rectangle sentiments. So I am using my trimmer and I am just cutting to connect the two tick marks, but I'm not going all the way up. You can see how they are still connected to the base of the cardstock. All right, so now I have all of these flaps. I'm using some temporary tape just to hold things together. You don't have to do that, but for me, it helps things to be a little sturdier. I get a better cut. And then I will go horizontally and once again, connect those tick marks. I like this trimmer because it has like a little wire guide so I can see exactly where I'm gonna cut. They end up at one and a quarter inch by two and a quarter inches. And so then I cut a piece of some blue cardstock that is one and a half by two and a half inches and it works beautifully. So I'm gonna add my little dog on the right hand side and I've sort of put my rectangle sentiment at an angle and just like with the circle sentiments, I'll use removable adhesive and I have a pile of other sentiment options. I could pull from another kit and have a happy birthday sentiment. By the way, my friends, I am still working on the favorites kit. So if you have requests for particular sentiments or sentiment types, please let me know in the comments below and I will try to include those um, in that kit. This one might be my favorite. I, I love all three of these cards so much, but if I was gonna make a mini slimline version, why not make an A too? So this has that same kind of closure, right? It's gonna tuck right behind and in between those two label dies. I just love this airplane cat. <laughs> and it stands up on display. The other one would too, if you cut it from cardstock instead of pattern paper. Our card base is eight and a half by four and a quarter. You can get two of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11, and I'm scoring at either end at one and a half inches. And then just like before, we're sort of folding those into the middle. It makes this sort of U shape, and that will be our card base. There are directions for a front and back piece like before. So this is a four and three quarters of an inch by three inches. And then you would cut a piece slightly smaller, or I like this idea, use a three and a quarter inch circle over top of that rectangle and it makes the perfect like flap holder closure thing. So I hope that makes sense. I'm having a day, you guys. So I wanted to add a little bit of visual interest and I am just sticking this in my Misty. I've lined it up with one of the grid lines on my sticky mat. And then I'm gonna use a big background stamp and I'll just cover up the parts I don't want it to stamp on with a piece of scratch paper. That's just printer paper in there. I'll add that to my door of my Misty and then I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up. You guys, I don't talk about this a lot, but I use Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks for stamping. They're a dream. That was one stamp and I got a perfect impression. That happens more with the darker colors than the lighter colors, but also I need to re-ink most of my lighter colors. So I'm sure that's, <laughs> I'm sure that's affecting the stamping quality, but they just have the perfect viscosity. They stick beautifully. They stamp wonderfully. Um, so yeah, I have two brands of ink and this is the one I prefer stamping with. So that will finish up my sort of stamping on this card, just on either flap. For our airplane, we're gonna use the Flyby Greetings from Spellbinders. I love this thing. Of note, if you're watching this video as it's coming out, this airplane is in the buy one, get one free sale um, at Spellbinders right now. So I'll link it below, all my supplies linked below. There's a blog post. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, I have a Facebook page. I've recently started a Facebook page. So I will have all those links right at the top. Um, if you're interested in following me on other social media, I would love that. So I am assembling my little airplane and I tell you what, I'm gonna make a mistake right here. There's a little debossed line where the big wing piece goes, but I needed to put an, all the decorative pieces on that wing set first. So I'm gonna have to like stick my pokey tool in there and fix it later, but it's gonna be fine. So I start with that one bottom piece with the debossed line and then I flip it over and start adding glue. There are two little support pieces kind of right behind where the pilot sits. And I'm gonna clip off the one that's closest to the seat because my cat doesn't fit otherwise. And actually you'll never notice because those pieces visually would be behind where the pilot is sitting anyway. It works out beautifully. 
Um, that cat is another one of the Karen Bernstein critters. And I made a bucket load of those last year with my son for Valentine's Day. And so I just already had her in my stash. But she comes together really easily, a lot like the bunny. There's like a stencil feature on the dye itself to put in her eyes and nose and mouth. Um, and then you like tuck the little belly in there. I added some details with a white gel pen. You could see me there <laughs> with the airplane like cutting one of the die cut pieces so I could stick it up underneath that bottom left wing. That's that's the piece I messed up. You know, that's how it goes. For some of the really small pieces where placement matters, like the wheels, I will put glue on the wheels and leave them flat on my desk and then pick up the airplane and kind of lay them onto the wheels just because it's easier for placement. Okay, here is my label and I'm sort of getting the lay of the land. I'm looking to see how much of this will overlap the card base flap on the left. I'm holding my fingers there and adding glue only onto that left hand side. I will center this and I will glue only the left part of the label to the base of my card and I'm gonna give it a minute, right? I don't want that popping loose. Now I'm gonna open my card up and on the inside you can see, you can't see the whole label, right? So this is totally optional, but I'm gonna add a second label that will just match up and make the inside look a little cleaner. I really like that. I'm sort of picky about these things, but you could skip it. You could totally skip it. So the light purple is the largest label in the set. And then this is the next smaller. And I'm leaving myself about an inch where there is no glue. And that's going to go towards the outside edge. And I'll just kind of center it. And now, again, I have this sort of flappy closure, right? That left-hand side tucks right in between the two labels. And I just think it's super fun. I'm gonna decorate the front with another label that's the second largest, right? Just right in the middle there. Um, and that will be perfect. And then I can kind of start thinking about placement. My cat fits perfectly. <laughs> I did not mean to pun that up, but I did perfectly in my airplane. I just stuck her head up right through kind of the where the cockpit is. And then I wiggled her tail into place. I can use a little wet glue to hold that steady. I'm going to use a strip sentiment for this one. And so I go through and I just trim the sentiments. So I have tick marks touching both the left and right edge. And then I'm really careful and picky to line up the first two tick marks as I run that through my trimmer. Um, and then I will sort of turn and flip. So I know I definitely have a 90 degree angle. Once I get that, I can go through and chop them all apart really, really quickly. This is about a quarter inch. And so I'm gonna stick this onto a piece of purple cardstock that is three eighths of an inch. And it creates this beautiful little mat. It's not gonna take up a ton of space on my card. And I really, really love it. It says, wishing you a catastic birthday. I almost put seven out of seven cats don't care that it's your birthday, but the cat is too happy. It just didn't, <laughs> it's funnier, but it didn't seem to fit. There are some clouds in the die set with the airplane. And so we'll add those onto the front. I do want to let you know those labels that I love so much. I picked those up in the fall sometime when they were on super sale at Spellbinders. Um, they're out of stock a lot of places. And I apologize. I try not to do that when I've got videos coming out. Um, you can click notify me at a couple of those stores if you're really interested. But what I showed you kind of at the beginning with this sketch where it's like you can use a rectangle and then you can use a circle on top of that, it has a really similar look. Or look through the die cuts that you do have something large enough to span across. Anything that's like a nested die would work beautifully for this. Okay, so give it a shot. See what you have in your stash. If you've got something popping into mind where you're like, oh my gosh, definitely that's the one. Let me know in the comments below because I want to check it out. I'm just adding everything with some wet glue uh, onto the front of my card. And then I'm going to stack up two more labels for the inside so that I have a place to write my message. I am again using the two largest labels. And so it's going to just fit behind the ones I already have in there. So I'll add wet glue all over it. And I'm going to lay it on top of the labels on the front of the card, the glue facing up. And then I will just fold the card closed into that so you can't see it when the card is closed. I have one more glittery cloud to add. So I'm going to just stick that on the inside. And that finishes up this card and it just tucks closed right in between those two labels. 
I love this one. I love mixing and matching my dies from different companies and seeing ways that they fit together. Um, it was only when I made the critter kit that I was like, oh, I could put animals inside of the vehicles from Spellbinders. Um, so the vehicles will now be moving to my critter uh, kit in my stash. So here's one more card that I made. This video was getting long anyway, and I, I don't know, something about um, the card base wasn't really working for me. I stenciled the background with this scrapbook.com mod circle stencil because it's huge. I still had to shift it once, but because it's a really clean geometric pattern, that was pretty easy. But I mostly wanted to show you all of this junk food. <laughs> this is sweet and savory from Spellbinders. And I love raccoons and trash pandas. I have another Karen Berniston. This is the woodland animals. And I just wanted to put my little raccoon with all my junk food. Let's stay up late and eat trash. I'm probably going to create a different card base for that one, but I wanted to share it all the same. I would love to know which of these cards is your favorite. And please let me know if you have requests for the favorites kit for sentiments in the comments below. I'm going to try to include people's top picks. If you are interested in the free printable, all I ask is that you subscribe to my channel. So if you've hit that button, go ahead to the description box below and you will find instructions for downloading there. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you next time.